35 years ago, I received a gift that changed my life. You know, one of those moments that uh, you remember forever, and the moment like you're falling in love, you never forget this moment for your rest of your life. This is the moment that happened to me. I grew up in a small town in Israel. My father is a Holocaust survivor. It means that as a child, he ran away from the Nazis in the forests of Europe. He lost his entire family before immigrating to Israel. My mother grew up in a very small village in Israel. Both my father and mother didn't have a primary education. Saying this, both my father and mother were obsessed with education. They would do everything in their power that our education will be as best as it can. So when I was 10 years old, my mother heard about something called a computer. She didn't know what it is, she didn't know what it can do, she didn't know anything about it. The only thing she heard about is that the computer is going to change the future. And therefore, like every good Jewish mom, she went to the closest bookstore and bought the, com the computer book that you see right here. And she gave it to me. And as you see, it's Atari. And I, today I found out that many of you don't know what is Atari. This is Atari. So when I was a child, Atari was the Xbox. It was the PlayStation. This was the fun platform. And I was too poor to have the, plan the fun platform. So I said to myself, that could be very cool. I will try to code and to have fun with this book. So I started to code. When I, when I started to code, the only thing that I had was a pen and paper and the book. And I started to code. And after a few weeks, I came to my mom and said, hey, mommy, you know, it's very nice. But in order to code, I really need a computer. So she, she registered me to like a very early version of coding school. And I've been there for a couple of weeks. And I loved it. And I went back to my mom and father and said, please, 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 can you please buy me a computer? And I did it again and again and again and again and again. And eventually, they took a big loan in order to buy this Atari 800 that you see there. This is, by the way, this is my table at home. This Atari 800 computer goes with me wherever I go around the world, and it's here right now in Shanghai with me. You need to understand, this Atari 800 changed my life. Using this Atari 800, I taught myself English. Using this Atari 800, I learned math. Using this Atari 800, I created virtual worlds. Using this Atari 800, I created games, those games that I wanted to have. This Atari 800 changed my life, and this Atari 800 can change your life as well. 69 years ago, the world changed in a way that was so great, so immersed, so dramatic that it changed civilization forever. 69 years ago, we invented a digital brain. 69 years ago, we invented a superior civilization. This is the moment when the past ended and the future started. 69 years ago, a new baby was born, and the name of the beast baby was the Manchester baby. The Manchester baby that you see here on the screen spoke a completely new language. And today, this language is the most popular language in the world. It's not English. It is the most popular language in the world. It's the most important language in the world. It's even the most popular language in space, as far as I know. And although it is the most important language in the world, most of you don't know it. Well, it's not really true. All of you actually know how to speak this language, but very few of you knows how to read and write it. Why? Whenever you use a technology, like a computer, like a projector, whatever you're going to use, you are actually speaking robotics. You are interacting with technology. But the people that can actually write and read, they are designing the technology of the future. And if you look at the world of the future, there will be a great barrier between the people that actually design the future and all the other people that will just use the other things that people created. You see, robotish is the language of robot and is the most important language today. Now, most people don't think that they can learn robotish. They're saying, oh, you know, it's too complicated. This is like geeks, like for geeks like Ami. This is like for people that are very good in math. This is so complicated. I tried C++ in the university. It was so hard. Therefore, I can. And I'm convinced that everybody can learn robotish. My daughters are 9 and 10, and they can code, and they can literally work in my company. My 5 years old, he learns robotish. Everybody learn robotish. You can learn robotish. And I want to show you right now that learning robotics is not so complicated. So in order to prove to you that it's not complicated, I created a small game here that you see on the screen. And I'm just going to run this game for you. And as you can see, it's a very simple game, right? 
uh, the ball is moving around. Whenever I'm going to move the paddle and I'm going to touch the ball, I will get a point. Very simple. Now, on the left-hand side, you see the code. And the code starts in Robotish with something that we call a variable. A variable is something that stores data. So for example, we say in the beginning, uh, let's create a canvas. A canvas is the, is the playground. And let's call it canvas. And then let's give it some sizes. So for example, here, the width is 300. So let me change it. And I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, 200. Now you can see it's a little bit bizarre game. Let me change it back. And I'm going to change uh, also the, the height. So now the height is 400. Let's make it uh, 200. And uh, as you can see, again, it's a very bizarre game. The next variable, as you can see, is something that we call ball radius. And as you might imagine, it is the ball radius. So if I'm going to change it from 15 to, let's say, uh, 50, uh, that's a very easy game. And the last one is the paddle width that I can also play with it. And let's uh, change it, for example, from 100 to, uh, let's say, 200. Uh, you're going to see that the game now is much, much, much easier. So you know what's variables. So now let's talk about a function. And in order to explain to you what a function, I will leave the code for a second. Uh, a function is the, is the core of computer software. A function is a set of commands. So let's imagine right now that I want to teach you how to dance. So I will say to you, lift your hand, turn around, step twice, turn around, and jump, for example. Now imagine every time I want all of you to dance, I will need to repeat all those orders again and again and again. Well, in computer language, in robotish, the only thing that I need to do, I need to create a function. So I will create a function called dance, and all those instructions will go into robotish. So every time I'm going to tell you dance, you're going to do all those things. And this is the power of robotish, because you can say, you can add more and more and more and more commands. So if you go to our game here, remember it? So we have a function called draw ball. As you might imagine, it draws the ball. And it tells the, the computer, draw a, ball, a circle at x and y, certain radius. And let me just change the color for you to see how the function works. And now it's going to be pink. Uh, and now let's, draw, uh, let's, uh, let's fix the draw paddle function. And let's change the color. Well, I don't know. Let's make it uh, red, for example. OK, very good. And the last function is something that draws games. And this is the function that runs the game. And this function draws the canvas. Let's make the canvas a little bit nicer, maybe yellow. Yes. And it draws the, the canvas, draws the ball, draws the code. And eventually, it's checked if, if there was a meeting between the ball and the paddle. Congratulations. You just read Robotish for the first time in your life. And you have to admit that reading Robotish is not that, it's not that complicated, right? It's kind of English with some numbers, etc. You, for sure, you will agree with me that even young kids can learn what I just show you right now. It's truly not complicated. You know why? There is a secret in Robotish which makes it very different than any other language. We call it the feedback loop. Robotish gives you an immediate feedback if you did something right or wrong. For example, before I moved to Shanghai, I, I wanted to learn Chinese. So I downloaded the audiobook and I was running in the streets of Tel Aviv talking Chinese to myself. And I was 100% sure that I speak nice Chinese. And then I got to China and I started to speak to taxi drivers and I saw that nobody understands even a single word of what I'm saying. The reason is, by the way, I didn't have a feedback loop. Nobody, when I was running, nobody was telling me, Ami, what you're saying is just crap, it's bullshit. But it was. With robots, it doesn't happen because you just saw, whenever I'm modifying a piece of code, immediately I know if it's working or not. This is the feedback loop. And this makes robotish the ultimate language that you can actually learn alone. And there are so many platforms out there that allow you to learn robotish. And you all can do it. And you all must do it. Because right now, it's probably the most important language, as I said before. You want to ask yourself, what makes a language so important? Well, uh, 50 years ago, and uh, one of the speakers spoke about it, every country around the world focused on their native language. So in Israel, it was purely Hebrew. In China, it was purely Chinese. And every country decided that's what our students should learn like. But 50 years ago, it was very obvious that foreign language are the future. And if you will not have it, you will, you will have serious problems. Because if, even if you go 200 years before, you go to the Rothschild family, for example, the, Mr. Rothschild, he took his five sons and he sent them to all the capitals of Europe, the most important capitals. Each one of those, of those sons learned the local language, 
learn the local land, uh, culture, and then by communicating between them and with the different countries, they created a global empire that was stronger than those nations. You see, it was, it was a known fact 50 years ago that language is critical, but it took time. Well, guess what? 1980s English is 2030 robotish, and today it's nothing less than a critical, critical, critical survivor skill. But there's something else which is very special about robotish, and it makes it very different than any other language. Since the birth of the Manchester baby 69 years ago, robotish was reinvented more than 500 times. You see, technology is moving so fast that we must update the language, which makes robotish the ultimate language if you want to adapt a life of continuous learning, which is critical for you and for your children. It is the ultimate platform if you want to be a self-learner. It is the ultimate platform if you want to be an adaptable person. And that makes it nothing less than a critical skill right now. Robotish also created a new type of leaders. You know, people like uh, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, they became the leaders of this world because they knew how to speak, read, and write Robotish better than everybody else. They changed the world, they changed society, they changed the educational system. They made the world a much smaller place. Companies like Alibaba, companies like Tencent, companies like Google would not exist without Robotish. Even, even organizations like TED would not exist without Robotish. Robotish is nothing less than the future. It is my future, it is your future, and this is your kid's future. My father and mother discovered Robotish 35 years ago. I hope you discovered Robotish today. Thank you, Mother, and thank you, Father, for changing my life, and thank you for listening.